Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you happen to be. Uh, my name is Dave Curran. I'm the instructional coach for technology here at Saigon South International Schools Elementary Division. It's also my honor on behalf of the VTC committee to introduce to you Dr. Gina Ryan, who will be talking to us today about tech tips for music teachers, resources, and strategies. A little bit about our uh, workshop presenter today. Gina is an honorary professor at Piap University and the senior school music teacher at Prem Tinsel Ananda International School in Chiang Mai, Thailand. She has performed in Canada, US, Japan, China, France, Mexico, and Thailand, and has presented at various conferences in North America and Asia. Her research has been published in Action, Criticism, Theory for Music Education, Canadian Music Educator, Research Studies in Music Education, Percussive Notes, The Instrumentalist, and Psychology of Music. Gina also holds music performance and music pedagogy degrees from McGill University, the University of Toronto and Memorial University of Newfoundland. She has been a jury member for the Chiang Mai Ginastera International Music Festival and is a curriculum reviewer and workshop leader for the IB. We are super excited to have Gina with us today. And this is a workshop I am particularly looking forward to as someone who geeks out on music technology but has zero clue about music theory. So um, I hope you're all looking forward to this workshop as much as I am. So without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to Gina. Gina, if you'd like to unmute your microphone, and off you go. Thank you for that kind introduction, Dave. And I'm actually really happy that Dave is our host because he has uh, quite an extensive knowledge of DAWs. So I, I think that if I get tripped up with any questions, he'll be able to jump in and help me out. So that's wonderful. Well, welcome everybody uh, to this workshop. Uh, I know we have more people coming, but we need to get started because I definitely have a full hour of things planned. I'm going to share my screen now with you all. And um, the way we've, all right, can you all see? Dave, can you see? Good to go, Dave? Oh, what happened? Uh, do, 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 do. Show video panel. Okay, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, Dave? Okay, great. Um, and so um, I'll just move this a little bit over here. All right. Um, if you haven't already, um, I have shared with uh, in in the um, I've shared beforehand this document prior reading. It's actually nothing to really have read, um, but um, more just so you have access to um, to these resources. There we go. So the idea is um, you, can, you can follow along and not, um, and not play around you know, with these programs or you can. So if you haven't already, um, I would encourage you to, um, so as we go, so for the first program, it will be um, note flight or, or another notation program. All right, and this is tech tips for music teachers. It's, it's a really basic intro and, um, and just to get everybody on the same page. So the overview is we're going to do the first half on notation software and looking how, at how to use that. Then we'll look at digital audio workstations often referred to as DAWs or DWs depending on who you're talking to. And then I really wanna save a minute uh, at least three. So Dave, give me a little like, woo. Um, I, I really wanna make sure that I show you guys music first and how, um, how it works as a management system. It's pretty neat if you don't know about it. So there's really two guiding concepts for this workshop. And it's really that kind of guides my own teaching. And the first is it's music through technology, not music technology. So when we're teaching, we're still teaching music, um, but and just keeping that in the mind. And, and so I always think, how can we use this program musically? Um, and then the other thing that's guided me as I have kind of made the leap into becoming more familiar with technology, because it certainly hasn't always been the case for me, um, was looking for shared features across programs. And so that's going to be something I do with you, uh, because the, um, the, the, the programs always change, and, and what students are using will always change. And so I find there's a lot of benefit to just knowing some shared features. So we'll get started. Um, all right, so the first thing is notation software. And as I'm introducing these in the chat box, could um, everybody just share with me if you've used any of these programs or other programs for notation? Okay, uh, and so, and if you haven't, again, if you haven't already signed on 
to Note Flight or another notation program, um, please do that now because then you can follow along. All right, so MuseScore, Finale, Sibelius. Anybody else using or have used notation software? And you don't have to have because this is a, a basic intro course. Okay, so again, encouraging people to share, but we're going to move on. So I'm going to show you now um, how I would how how I would teach and set up these ideas in my classes because I think that's um, often a, a friendly place to start. So um, what I would do is is to make sure that I'm on the same page with my students. These are the things I get them to do in their um, in their individual projects, whether it's no flight or mu score um, or Sibelius, and just to make sure that we're all they they know these words and where to find them. Uh, I think most of us are teaching in international schools, and and certainly the at least with my school population is very transient, and so I want to make sure year after year that they know, and I'm not assuming any prior knowledge. So let's do this together again. If you have no flight up, that'd be brilliant. So the first thing is we're going to create a new score. Okay. And so we'll start with piano and focal. And then the second and third thing uh, were to change the key signature and change the time signature. And so uh, actually I'll have to move this little box down. All right, so we've got this ribbon here and um, you can actually make it as busy as you want. Uh, so we can add some more elements like this. And the change the key signature is this button. And I get students to do this right away. Otherwise they're composing everything in, um, in C major, which is fine, but I want them to know what key signatures are really and how to, how to manipulate them. All right, so let's just go to a, a comfy old band uh, key signature. And the next thing we're going to do is change the time signature. And so you can do that either by clicking on the time signature right here. And again, this is a very busy ribbon or um, clicking on the time signature. And we can change it right there. Ooh, lovely. Okay, three, four. Uh, then I'm going to ask you all to change the tempo. So we'll find that it's over here. We'll just move it down to 99. And finally, we're going to add instruments. And you do that by coming to parts. And, um, I'll add flute, different flute. Let's add drums. So we'll go to, I'll show you how to do it this other way. So unpitched percussion, drum set standard. And then we'll add a trumpet. And I'm purposely picking a transposing instrument. Okay, and so um, what, another thing I like to do with students is to make sure they're comfortable and aware of score order. So I'll have them move uh, the trumpet up Flute up and then the drums are under the piano. And, um, and so uh, what's, what's really neat about uh, Note Flight now is, um, is how it deals with transposing instruments. So let me just show you. You can see that um, we're all in the same pitch and this is great when students are composing, but let's say they wanted to submit this to a conductor. Um, you can just come here to score show in concert pitch, and you can see now that the trumpet's been transposed. And so that will give you an authentic score for your conductors. Um, I should note, um, after we do the segment on notation, if you have any questions, um, there will be a time before we go on to DAW, so don't worry. Uh, and, and so what's really neat about no flight is if I were to print this off, and if you're worried about your trumpet, um, here's what happens when we go to print off. All right, so many things happen. Oh, I printed the wrong thing. Eh, that is not what I wanted to do. Ah, uh, I'll try it again. Parts, print. Okay, print individual parts. All right, so here you can see the voice stays in B flat, the flute stays in B flat, and the trumpet 
um, is now in uh, concert pitch for trumpet, which is great. And so your students don't have to worry too much about that. And I, I found that to be a really helpful thing. So that's what I would do to get my students started and to, to test for prior knowledge and to see how I can help them. Because really if those building blocks aren't in place, um, then they, you know, they might really struggle later. Um, one thing I want to share with you guys, it's not on the original resource list, um, is this. It's called uh, No Flight Making a Mess. And so if you are really new to no flight and notation programs, and I went too fast, um, that's a great video on YouTube to help kind of walk you through, uh, to walk you through no flight and just all the different features. Okay, so um, I'm going to now play a video uh, that I made. We did this because of sound. And I one thing that's, I think, fairly new, I've, I haven't worked with it in a while, is is extending past traditional notation in no flight and the recording possibilities, the mixing and mastering that now exist in no flight. And so if you are working in a school where you've been mostly working with traditional notation and you want kind of a bridge, this is excellent. Or vice versa, if you've been mostly working with DAWs and you wanna connect that, um, here we go. So this video is about five minutes long and it just shows you those features. Forgive my voice. Here we go. We're, we're going to look at recording. It's pretty straight ahead. Uh, you start by pressing the record button. And it doesn't record away, it just sets you up. And um, I want to point out I'm in strip view right now. Um, the normal view is page view. This is how you can change that. All right. Um, so just to make sure we know how to set up, we'll click on set up. Hello. And because I'm going to sing my part, uh, that's why I just did that. Okay, it says try again. Woo! So I moved a bit closer. Great. Um, it's usually too loud when you use an instrument, so you just have to adjust the levels. Um, and then the next step, yes, I'm using the internal microphone. I'm not using external. Okay, I am going to be using headphones. Um, so I'm going to put them near the computer. I'm going to press start. There's a beep. I think you can hear that. Um, and so that's just to ensure there's no latency with the recording. Click on input device. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm using the, the internal microphone options. Um, I just want one count and measure. Great. This we've done before. Um, here you can mute selected parts. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I don't want to mute them. I'm going to have my headphones on. I'm going to sing along. And I guess you can decide how you want to assign this to students. Here I go. So you'll just hear my lalas. You won't hear the actual music because I've got headphones in. But here we go. La, 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 la. All right. And you'll see here, it says uploading wave file, and then you know you're good to go. It takes a second, and then it will appear, and then we'll listen to the playback. All right. Okay, there it is. And so you can see that it started here, there's no sound, and then we've got the pitches. Let's listen to that beauty. So it definitely is worth putting the headphones in. I've done that this few times without headphones and you just get some, you know, really weird doublings. All right, so that's recording. And um, now what we're going to do is go to parts. And this is where we can do a little bit of mixing. Uh, it's pretty simple. There, there aren't a lot of options, but um, we'll we'll look at uh, volume levels and we'll look at panning. So uh, the first thing we'll do is 
let's uh, listen. Well, we, we just listened to it. So let's pretend that we felt that the piano was too loud. So move that down. We wanted more flute, a little bit less voice. And so this is something we can help our students with in terms of thinking about balance. And it's pretty easy. The other thing um, that could be fun is panning. And so that's the left and right speakers. And so we've kind of got this back and forth here. So I the right speaker and the flute only the left speaker. And I'll balance this equally here. Okay, um, I'm gonna play this back in a second. Um, but first I'll go to the master, the master track. This is where um, what you do affects all tracks. And so um, panning gives a sense of the space and as does reverb. And so generally we want to give the impression that our instruments are all in the same room. Uh, so we've been hearing without reverb. Let's hear with cathedral and um, the reverb level. I can move it down, but we'll keep it all the way up. Oops. Okay. All the way up. So you can really hear the difference. So again, I've got the panning here happening and I've got this reverb. Let's see. And I, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, on, on your speakers, but I can definitely hear that difference here. So those are just a few fun things to play around with your students. And I'll end this video. So All right, so video ended. Um, I, I just wanted to point out something. And I've actually uh, talked to No Flight about this. The word gain actually is the is the input of the microphone. And, and in, in this in this case, it's actually not referring to game, it's, it's gain, it's referring to volume level. That's the only little issue I have with this is especially as we're introducing technology to students and they're using and learning more to, uh, terminology, um, this kind of instant inconsistency with gain is a little, just something to, to be mindful of. Again, gain is the volume that's coming into, the levels that's coming into your microphones. But apart from that, um, I think there's a lot uh, going on there. Okay. So um, put that down there for now. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, um, I'm sure you could hear, I, I could have and should have really mixed that differently so that you, know, you have um, the, the voice being louder. But again, that's something to play around with, uh, with your students. All right, and um, there's three more things I wanna do with um, notation. And so I wanted to propose a few ideas if you're new and you wanted to get started um, with your students. So uh, there's the obvious compose a song and this can be really differentiated in, in so many ways. So you can provide some of the instruments. It could just be a few instruments or one instrument. Uh, you could decide whether or not to give chords as teachers, a chord progression. Um, you know, and, and something I do is I, I help students map out the chords if that's the case. Um, timbral exploration uh, with a program like No Flight. Um, again, you could provide a four measure uh, composition uh, or chord progressions that they, they, they try to um, listen to and explore with in different timbres. And that's a really um, interesting, I guess, exploration of sound, um, something that then they could transfer to the DAWs. Um, and then they can also ex experiment with, with voicings as well. Call and answer is something we're going to do in a moment. Um, and that can be just a mini project. Record your voice or instrument along into a song. And that's why I wanted to show um, what NoFlight was doing. So if you have a band or a choral or string program, you could actually, let's say it's uh, three or four parts. You could have your students playing one of the parts and having that would, that would be then where they could mute the track that they're not recording. And then have headphones in so that uh, yeah, because if, if you actually don't have headphones in, everything gets recorded and it can be kind of messy. But but that could be, a, I guess, a performance aspect to how to use the software. Uh, I don't want to say it's not just composition, but yeah, there are lots of, of ways. Elements exploration. So this could be kind of a fun way to check for students' understanding, maybe in uh, little formative assessments, just to get a sense or prior knowledge uh, 
assessments that you might do. So for example, you might say, all right, how would you, if it's maybe a younger level, uh, okay, can you put in the sign for soft for measure one and loud for measure two? Um, you know, and then, then you're seeing that connection between uh, terminology and symbol. Uh, you can ask, you know, how would you, how would you create uh, legato for this section? And so that way they're, they're, they're trying to manipulate um, some of the ideas that we're teaching them. Obviously transcriptions are great for ear training. And then finally, something that might be helpful for your band, choral, orchestra students, or to develop conducting skills or analysis is score explanation, uh, explorations. And that would be, it could be actually as, as easy as having students take a score and try inputting it to, to have a better sense of score order to see how scores work. Um, it could also be different projects so students expand beyond the genres they're familiar with. So those are just some project ideas I want to share um, and hopefully some of those relate to your contexts. The other thing I wanted to share with you today is flat. And so in preparation for this workshop, um, you know, at school I use Sibelius and um, No Flight. Although if I, if I had discovered Muse score first, I might've gone for that first, to be honest. But, um, but I've just discovered flat. And I think, but please correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think it's the only notation software where you can have collaborative um, collaboration on the same score. And it's, it's super fun. So I contacted Music First to get a demo to show you. I don't own it, but I wish I, wish I did. All right, so I'm going to again play another little video and explain what I've done. So, well, I can, I'll explain first. So as the teacher, what I did was I created this document, this bongo pattern. And then every second measure is, you know, a call and then a response. So, so every second measure is a response. And you can see here that the students um, have colored their response. So you can assign by color. And then we've used the text and the annotation um, to write their names above. It's a very, that's a very simple thing. Um, but let me just play, play it for you, so at least the first four measures. All right, way to go, Jairi. All right, so um, so that's something that uh, you could do to get students started if there's certain things that you want to teach them. And then you can kind of extend that as well. And um, maybe you provided this template to, to all students or into small groups, groups of four or five. And something that would be fun for them to do is then, you know, each student could then add another instrument and they can kind of build scores together in more collaborative approaches. So I just want to share some ideas and examples um, that may or may not move you forward. And we're at 124. I think it's time for some questions. I know we're going very fast or maybe it's very slow. Let's see, any questions? No, right? All right, well, we'll keep going then. All right. Uh, so next we're going on to digital audio workstations. And again, um, this is a moment uh, where two things really, uh, please share in the chat box what you may already be using or have used or want to use. And um, this would be a time now to, if you wanna play along uh, you know, as we're going to open up GarageBand if you have a Mac, cause it's free with Macs and iPads uh, or some of the other programs programs that have free limited subscriptions. So I, I know that Soundtrap and Soundation and Audacity, I forgot Audacity, I can't believe I put that in last minute. Gosh, um, I think FL Studios does. I don't think Reaper or Ableton Live, but um, so if you guys want to play along, feel free to, or if you just wanna watch, that's fine. Okay, so did anybody share with us what they're using? All right. GarageBand Audacity. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I put Audacity. I can't believe I forgot it. It's just last night when I went, oh, okay. So like I said, our school, we're using um, GarageBand because we're a Mac school. Um, it's actually surprisingly good. All right, so um, if you're not familiar um, with DAWs, they're primarily used for recording, producing, and composing. 
And I would actually probably say producing, recording, composing in that order, although I use it for composing. Um, and we're going to just, uh, again, thinking about shared features, uh, we'll start a, an individual project. And, and I think that if you're, if you're not familiar with digital audio workstations, they can be pretty overwhelming. At least I was the first time I had to work with one. So I thought I would show you a couple of different interfaces. For some reason, they're always black. Um, and then again, because uh, in preparation for this workshop, I actually got to discover Soundtrap, which some of you probably know. Soundtrap is kind of a cousin of, of Flat in that, um, again, it allows for collaboration, which is really cool. It's very limited. Um, so here you can see the collaborators. You can add other people to join. Um, it's a little bit, it's probably one of the more limited uh, DAWs, but again, depending on the age group and the purpose, um, I would actually, if, if I wasn't leaving the school uh, to move somewhere else next year, I would, I would actually buy it for next year. I think it's got a lot of, a lot of potential. Okay, we'll come back to this in a second. Um, so let's look at what, what DAWs have in common. They have tracks. And so there are basically three kinds of tracks. Audio, audio is what you record in through a microphone and it becomes a WAV file uh, or an MP3. And uh, then we have the, here I'll show you with Crash Manage. Everybody, I'm going to stop sharing for one second. Okay. My garage band is loading. Okay. So you have tracks. These are tracks, and you have them across all all programs. Um, and then uh, the, oh yes, the other kind of track is a drum track and loop library. And um, I teach I teach uh, middle school and high school, so I don't actually let students use those in projects because when they get to the DP, they're not allowed to. However, um, I let them listen to them and then they can, I mean, they can play around with them, but then they can use uh, those tracks as inspiration for inputting their own ideas. That's just what I do. Um, okay, so then the liquid crystal display, that is actually what LCD means, it stands for. And so that's just showing students where the tempo key signature and time signature is. And so, um, Again, we're, we're using these programs for music and making sure students are able to do certain things. Ah, ah, okay. I'm just trying to move this out of the way. Okay, oh my goodness, so many things. All right, so the, um, the tempo is here. You can see the tempo. And um, I usually get students again, like I do with, uh, with my notation, when I introduce, when we work with notation software, I'll usually do kind of a little intro task to make sure students know where things are, but have them change that so they, you know, explore other things. So I've changed the tempo to 90. Oh, I guess I didn't change the time signature, but you can see there's lots of choices. And then the, um, the key signature is B minor now. And here's how many bars or what bar we're at and the beats. And if I were to go to um, a different interface, so let's look at Soundtrap and those things. Here you have the tempo, it's down here. Here's the key signature, and again, lots of choices. And um, what was the other one? Oh, time signature, go to settings. And, and here again, it shows a little bit the limits of Soundtrap. So you, apparently there's only two time signatures and I could not find a custom. All right, but, but anyways, that's, that's fine. That's, that's what it is. Okay. Um, and then instruments and plugins. All right, so um, instruments, uh, we, so like I said, we have audio and audio is us, right? Like what we're recording into through a microphone, but then all programs come with their own MIDI instruments. And, um, and so, you know, the quality ranges, I, I use Logic Pro. Um, so when I'm using GarageBand, I tend to download as needed because these, so you can see I haven't downloaded any of these. They eat up a lot of space. Um, and then in here, for example, if I went to new track, you would see some of the instrument possibilities. And this 
would be your um, your audio file or your audio track sorry and these are your loops and the rest of these are your um, your MIDI instruments your virtual instruments uh, Dave who is the host he uh, reminded me of Spitfire and, and so plugins if you're not familiar with that term is basic well plugins can be a lot of things um, but it's basically you can download extra sounds or effects and uh, Dave, I actually tried to find your tip here. Um, so can you, so there are three products or three, three bundles, right? And one of them, if you fill in a form, I tried to look for that, but I wasn't so lucky. But right. Can... So if you go to the search bar at the top and type in uh, BBC SO Discover, it should come in there, hopefully. Here we go. Ah, okay. Discover, uh, yeah. At the cars? Yeah, so it's, I, I actually, if you scroll down the screen, I think it's somewhere there. Um, it says $49. Uh, then if you scroll up a little bit, okay. it says $49 or free. Ooh. So basically, um, if you fill out a survey just indicating your interest in the products and you know what, what your role is and whether you're in um, orchestration or education, and then submit the survey, I think it's about two weeks later, they send you a link for a free download. Okay, great. That's, yeah. a, that's a really great tips so um uh we can i can put this right now in the chat and then just you can take a screenshot to to know to scroll down i'm actually going to do that later that's a really really good tip. yeah um while i'm on gina i actually had a question about something you just showed on oh, um right. on garage band mm -hmm. uh, I, again my kind of limited knowledge of some things related to DAWs. i noticed that you talked about changing the key signature before kind of starting a project and getting set up in the beginning which is something i have done now i know on logic pro that when you do that if you use um apple loops or um, mm -hmm. as audio files and then it will automatically adjust the pitch to the correct key right. of the of the project. What are the other benefits of setting the key signature at the beginning? What else does it actually do? Um, well, when I'm when I'm working with students, it's it's really to make them mindful of what key they're in. That's that's really right. the the big thing. Yeah, for, for me, that's it. Just comes down to a, a pedagogical approach, mm -hmm. um, just because otherwise, um, I find my students forget that they need to be in a key. Well, I guess you don't technically need to be in a key, but depending on what you're assessing, so if it's assessing tonality and core progressions and things, then yeah, you probably should be in a key. So it's make them mindful because I find that sometimes um, people just randomly choose a key. It might not even be C major, but C major is the default. Um, and, I, I, and I think I know the other part of your question and I don't have the answer to that, which is like maybe does, um, does it, well, I guess, yeah, I guess then, yeah, apart from loops, I think that's, you know, those those pre-programmed loops, I guess that's it. I guess that's the advantage. Yeah, I know that is it. It's, it for me, it's such a, I remember yeah. years ago when I started using Logic, for example, you had to go into the time and pitch machine and adjust the actual oh. wave, the, adjust the uh, semitones and then rebounce it as a separate audio file and bring it back in. Now with Apple Loops, if you've set it to B minor and you drag in an audio file that was recorded in C major, it will automatically adjust it for you. So I do know that is one advantage of setting that at the beginning, but I wasn't aware of the other kind of more um, technical, theoretical aspects that you've just been talking about. But yeah, just just so that they know that what they're what they're actually doing. Yeah, great question. Thank you. Cool. Um, thanks. All right, and so yeah, we talked about we just talked about plugins, and again, that's for instruments. If you want to expect go beyond um, what's already offered for the DAW you're working for, with, um, some of them have great sounds, but yeah, you can definitely expand out. And why would you not if it's free and wonderful? Um, and then um, later, you can also get effects, and so. Um, uh, Garage band, you can get silver verb as a good reverb. All right, I'm, I'm kind of going ahead of myself. All right, um, let me go to the loop feature for listening, experimenting, and recording. So I'll show you first in Garage Band. And so this, it's really hard to. <laughs> All right, this loop feature is this is the loop, and then it makes a little loop, and you can make it as big as you want or as long as you want. And what's really great about loops is you can loop a section over and over and over. And so you can like, I could, I could solo this, like maybe I just want to listen to this and I would want to then compose something along or I want to experiment along and group along. And so it's a great way to experiment and tread ideas without having to, you know, once that section is over that you're trying to find a new idea along to, 
you just loop and loop and loop until you've got what you want. And so I'll just show you, um, because again, kind of the point of this is to show you those shared features, at least across two different ones. I tried to pick two fairly different looking. This is the loop, and then you can also click it there. And again, that idea where you can extend your loop, make it as long or as small as you want. Okay, and um, recording and metronome and count. Okay, so recording is this record button and you would go to um, either your, um, your MIDI track or do I have a, oh, I don't, huh, I don't have an audio track here. I can, I can create one though. Oh, gosh, I, I forgot a whole step. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 my, I had to shut my computer down and I had a blank garage band where I was adding things, but that's easy to do. Okay, so to add a track, you go to track, new track. Boom, there it is. Uh, software, and we talked about the software or the MIDI instruments, audio instruments. This is with the microphone. This is you wanna connect to your guitar or bass. And I don't have a lot of experience with this. I've gotten my students to teach me how, so I know what it looks like. Um, but they tend to know, and then the loops we talked about. So let's save the software instruments so we can see how to create a track. Oh, okay, and then should I just do one? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, and where did that track go? Oh, here we go. Another electric piano. And another way to add tracks easily is just this new track add button. Okay, I'm going to delete that track and. Here, if we want to add a track, um, it's super easy with Soundtrap, just boom. And then again, that's where you see your tracks. And I was talking about, so you, you would put your playhead to where you want to record and you probably want to record at the beginning. So we would add a new track. Let's see, you want to sing in and then you can start recording. And I, I just won't, I won't do that. Oh, I guess I could. Uh, no, the sound, right, we talked about sound. But it's, it's really straight ahead. I would say Soundtrap is, is a great intro to DAWs if you're wondering what would be a good intro. And then same thing here, there's your record button. The other thing I want to point out, and I've, I've touched on it, is the solo and mute. So let's say you're just trying to isolate a couple of tracks to see how they sound together. Um, then you, well, you could press solo and solo. Let's say I just wanted those two. And I would just press those or you could decide to just mute a track. All right. you know, if you don't mind, I just want to jump in with a, a little tip. I'm, I'm sure you've, you've probably um, come across this yourself and I've implemented this a lot, but what I found is through my own experience of using DAWs during the years is that you have lots of menus across the top of the screen normally, and then lots of different sub-menus and even sub-menus of sub-menus. And most of them have keyboard shortcuts. And if you can get quite um, savvy, at not only using those keyboard shortcuts, but actually editing, amending them to suit your own needs. Not only can you hide and show windows very quickly to, to, to show what you want to see on the screen, but you can actually perform not complex, but tasks which have two or three steps in a very, very short kind of just one click of your keyboard. And uh, you, know, you, you actually, when you count up those few seconds that you take to go to the top of the screen, click on track, or whatever it might be, or record, when you actually just choose a couple of keys on the keyboard, and if you're able, you actually end up get good at doing that without looking at the keyboard, over the course of a, a, a 45 minute lesson, say with students, you could end up saving yourself five or 10 minutes where you're actually navigating the screen instead of just typing quickly on the keyboard. So if anyone joining on this call isn't already kind of a keyboard shortcut person, even if you're not in your, your other kind of, um, you know, your, your Google Docs or your Word or your PowerPoint or whatever, if you can manage to do it on a DAW, it will save you so much time. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I spent a large part of the summer just trying to learn as many shortcuts as I could, and it really saves a lot of time and actually makes it more interesting. And in fact, I'll I'll sh I'll show um, I'll show everybody a few shortcuts, and 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 actually we can compare the difference how time consuming it it, it can be if you don't use shortcuts. Um, let's see. Okay, mutant solo. So, uh, how are we doing? Oh, we're actually doing pretty well for time. So thinking about. Um, composing and teaching your students composition. I, I, I again, it just depends on, on what your, your purpose is. I, I do want my students to be explicit in, in what they're doing um, because they tend 
to end up becoming quite random. And that's okay as a process, but I also want them to know what they're doing. So um, for the horizontal, that's your tracks, like we've talked about. Um, and, and just so we're using the same terminology, this is a track and these individual rectangles are regions. And we'll come back to that in a second. And then when it comes to um, kind of that vertical, like looking at form, um, for GarageBand, you have this, um, this line called arrangement. And you can click on it and you can see that there's all these, there's outros, there's intro, verse, chorus, and then you can sort them out as you want. Um, you know, so you can have intro, verse, chorus, and you can also rename them. So let's say you're not using song form, but you're using a different approach. And that, that way um, you can help your students guide their thinking and you can also see what their intention is. And so um, I guess if you're a, with an MIP school and they're, you know, you've got artistic intention, you can get your students to map out, well, even if you're not in, uh, doing MIP, get them to map out what their form is and then have them show you explicitly on the DAW. And that just helps with their organization as well. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, and we, we've already talked about key signature. All right, so we're gonna move on and going to Dave's point now about shortcuts. So I wanna show you a couple of really simple straight ahead um, uh, approaches to, uh, to editing. Um, so, so especially for those of you who may be feeling less secure with DAWs. So the first is actually, the first will be, um, oh, I should get out of, okay, there. <laughs> I should get out of automation first. Um, the first is just trimming, trimming a region. So again, this is a full track. I can have many regions or just one region, but this is a region. So we're going to trim that by moving this kind of box square thing. And I'm not sure, if, yeah, you can see that this is a loop. And what's, so if I bring that back, so it's actually, um, oh, hang on let me just bring this back. That's, a, that's called a non-destructive edit. So we can get the, the region back, it's an original place. So there's, there's this possibility. And up here, you can see now that the icon has changed and it's a loop. This is a really helpful feature. So you don't have to copy, paste, copy, paste. You can just go loop forever. And you just drag it over and loop as, as much as you want. So that's trimming and looping. And those are non-destructive edits. Now what we're going to do is let's say you just want to cut this. You only like half of it. You bring your playhead. This is called the playhead to where you want to cut. And when, uh, when Dave was talking about shortcuts, so I'll show you the long cut first. So let's say you want to cut this into, you have to go all the way up to edit. You click on that. Then you come all the way down to split regions of playhead and you click on that. And that does add up uh, in, in terms of time. And so another thing I just press, press command Z, so undo, is you, you're here, it's same thing. Your playhead is in the middle. And then I just press command T. And there you go, it's cut. And what's, what, what's great about that is I could delete that. I don't like it anymore, so um, goodbye. Or I could move it. And this is another easy thing to do. You can just move it to another track. You can move it um, further along on the region. Sorry, on the, on the track. All right, and uh, let's say you, you regret what you just did and you've already saved it and, and there's no undoing option. Another thing you can do is merge, um, well, actually you can merge any regions together. And so how you do that is, um, well, there's the long way and the short way. So I'll show you the long way first. So you highlight, let's say I wanna, I wanna put all of these together. You highlight them all, come to edit, and you can press join. There you go, they're all joined. Or um, you can then press command J. Oh, yeah. mm. Again, uh, Command J. Oh, I didn't press J. All right, and that's that's just another easy edit. So, um, so this is some basic editing. Um, we talked about moving. Okay, I'm going to show you a fade now. So we're going to uh, look at automation, and how to get up to automation is you press A, <clears throat> just A by itself, not with command. And the default, I think, for most um, most DAWs is volume, but it doesn't. Uh, but there's a lot of options. In fact, if we look at the drop-down box, tons of um, effects, and we've got pan, we've got reverb, echo. Let's just start with volume. And so, 
let's say you wanted to uh, fade out this region. Actually, let's say what we want to fade out this region. Um, and we want to fade it out from, let's bring all the volume all the way up. Let's say we want that. All you do is you click on that, you have this dot, and then where you want it to end. So let's say I want to have a really dramatic, complete fade out. That's how you do it. Um, and then, so this is a fade out. And you can have a fade in, and I'll show you a fade in. So I'll come to the trombones. And so we'll bring this dot all the way down. I'll make another dot here. Maybe I want it to go to maximum volume here. And the other thing I've just, so I've shown you a fade out and a fade in, but the other thing that um, I've just shown you is a cross fade. And that can be um, a really helpful tool to know um, when you're mixing music. So this is a cross fade where you've got one track fading out while another track is fading in. And again, you don't have to go to full volumes, right? Like that's pretty dramatic. Um, what else did I want to show? Since we're on automation and we will run short of time, so I'll just I'll just pick panning. Um, again, as I mentioned, so over here we've got this drop down box. Um, let's just go to panning. So panning is your left and right speakers, and I, I have a lot of fun with panning. Uh, I pan too much, but if you if you look here, we're max. We're here at the at the left speaker. So because I'm at the highest possible place sound will only go through the left speaker. And let's say I love that. But as soon as I drop to this, okay, maybe as soon as I drop to this next region or even halfway on this region, I wanna drop really dramatically to my right speaker. So I'll make another dot and then another dot. There we go. And I will drop that down. Okay, and I'll just bring that. So I wanna continue that. And that could be in a little bit more. Okay. And so you kind of go all the way from left, all the way to the right. And um, that's, I mean, I kind of approach it more as a composer, but obviously if you're you know, approaching as a producer, you would have your students thinking in terms of producing minds and where, like, where do they want different tracks in, you know, in their speakers if they want to play around that way. All right. Um, ah, moving on to quantization. So I'm going to press P for piano roll. Actually, I'm gonna press A now to get out of automation so the screen looks a bit less busy. And now I'm going to press P for piano roll. And there you go, piano roll. And um, quantization is, is for people like me who even though I'm actually a trained percussionist, when I input, um, and so you can input, um, hang on here. Okay, I, I just press Command K for the keyboard you can input directly on your keyboard like that. Or um, you can buy a little controller. I've, I have my own, but it doesn't matter what I use. I, I'm not always you know, right on, right on, accurate. Um, apparently I just need drumsticks in my hand to be accurate. So I take advantage of quantization. And so how, how that it works is right now you can see it's off. I'm over here and there's two elements of it. So there's the strength. And um, unless you want to sound like a robot, then you go to 100%. But you know you don't have to go full strength. You can still have that sense of humanness and maybe go a little bit less. And then you can decide um, the note value uh, you want to quantize to. And so I would say to students, well, what's the what's the shortest note value? So if if your shortest note value is 16th note, then you would pick 16th note normally. Um, I mean, if you make it too broad then you, you will lose your 16th notes, right? If I were, if my lowest value was a 16th note, but I made it a quarter note, then all of a sudden, if, if my rhythm was like, dick it, dick it, dick it, dick it, da, 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 then it would just be da, 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 you know? All right, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to highlight, let's say I, this is, all right, this is what I want to um, quantize. All right, and I want to quantize it. Let's say I want to quantize it at quarter notes. Did they, then they moved. And I'm not sure if you saw that shift. So let me uh, show again with quarter notes so you can see them move again. There you go. And so that's one way to use um, quantization to help students line up work. Um, bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Okay. Uh, and so I'm going to press P again to get out of piano roll. Um, 
a whole other workshop could be spent on um, effects. And effects are a lot of fun. Students really love them. And again, you press A to get to automation. Well, that's one way. And then you can see a lot of effects and there are plugin effects. And so for, um, for GarageBand, I've used Silververb as a plugin, but you know, there's, there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. Um, so we're gonna move on, um, but just knowing that that's, that's a possibility because I wanna talk about a few other things. Um, when I'm assessing, uh, here's some things that I get my students to think about. So I get them to think about, you know, if we're, if we're using these tools, um, we should be using them mindfully. So what's the quality of their mixing and their editing? What's, how is the balance between tracks? Are they using panning? Have I asked them to use that? Um, have they shown any awareness of automation? What about quantization? So are, are tracks syncing up uh, within themselves and then what between, you know, uh, between from tracks to tracks? Um, how do they use effects? So again, I would, I would actually teach each effect explicitly and get them to think about them. We would play around with, and then I would expect them to, you know, put those effects in their projects if that's what I was teaching for. Um, again, uh, you know, I've mentioned throughout this that I want my students to be thinking musically and connecting the music lesson to the DAW. So, what's the structure and the form if if we have a composition? And and really, it doesn't have to be this, you know, formulaic, you know, song form. It can be, um, but just so they have a, an awareness of the structure and the form of their piece. So again, they can, instead of using verse and chorus, they can use A, B, C, D to describe different sections or repeat sections. And then I will obviously, like I would for any music composition, I would assess and look for the overall effectiveness and imagination of the piece. Um, and so we have eight minutes left. I do wanna show um, music first, but let's stop here for a second to see if there's any, that's a lot of information. Um, any questions or any questions in the chat box? Oh yeah, thank you. Yes, C on the key, C key on your keyboard will turn the loop on and off. Awesome. Okay, well, I will keep moving forward then. Okay, Music First is um, a management system where you can uh, connect a lot of different software programs um, while um, you know, having your students in one system. I, I use it, but I don't, I, I have it actually. We have a few programs. I don't use it as a, manage, system, a management system anymore because my school has so many management systems, but let me show you, um, show you what it looks like. So this is the dashboard from the demo I asked. I asked them to give me a demo so I could show you all the different programs that uh, you could have with Music First. Actually, uh, this is what my school has. So we, we bought Practice First. O Generator comes, I think, with it. And I think we bought Focus on Sound or comes with it. But anyways, I would buy it because it's, it's really helpful for what I do. Okay, but the complete package, and again, I'm not trying to sell this as a product, but I think it's, it's really nice to be aware of. Um, you've got different um, ear training and music theory programs with your Aurelia and your mus musician. Ah, I'll have to play on the word. I just got it then. Um, focus on sound, which is what we have, is, um, is a great sound library uh, with a lot of instruments. And so when my students are deciding what instrument they want to choose for their major, we actually do a lot of exploring on focus on sound and listening to different possibilities before they make their choices. Um, flat, I've shown you. No, flight I've shown you. And sound trap, I've shown you. Foundation is the is a DAW. I, I yeah, I showed you that interface at the very beginning of the segment on DAWs. And what we bought, and what I want to show you right now is practice first. So we have we also have a band program at my school and a string program and a fire program. Um, but we bought sound a standard of excellence because we use that uh, method book. And so students can actually, and I, I did this before, look how many mistakes I made. I did that on purpose. Um, students would pick their instrument and they could listen to the whole, to the whole piece. So they can hear how it sounds. They can adjust how fast it goes. So that's such a great tool for later on when things are tricky. Um, I mean, trickier than whole notes with one pitch. And then they can record themselves for feedback. 
And so I purposely, you know, made these mistakes so we could see, students can see where they're going flat. Um, they can see where they're making rhythmic errors and they get that immediate feedback when you're not around as a teacher. And I have found that invaluable. It's been a huge time saver for, for me and the students. And it's kind of let us go on and do a few, you know, a few extra projects. Um, so there is, a, oh yeah, there's one other thing. Do, 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 do. Right. Oh, and the other thing is they get a score. And so uh, sometimes for some skill tests, instead of um, me listening to a lot of, lot of, lot of recordings, I will get them to share screenshots with me. Um, and so we have this kind of karate yellow belt, black belt thing. And so that's something that has helped us move forward with that program. The other thing I wanna quickly show you, I know we're oh, getting to the very end, um, is watch together. And if you don't know this, then I think it's such a great tool to know, especially as we're online, offline, online, offline with our students. Um, and it's, it's where you can watch the same video. Uh, so I've just put uh, some Uptown Funk there for you. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite you all. So I'm going to copy this link. I hope it works. Sometimes it goes funky on me. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. All right, pun was not intended, but there you go. All right, so I'm going, so if you can all click on that link and um, what I have to let you know, because I, I discovered this with my grade nines because I wasn't understanding why my grade sixes were doing this. Um, everybody, unfortunately, can control this, this bar. So I'm gonna ask you not to control, um, not to press anywhere here. We'll wait for a few more people to join us. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute and here's the beauty of it is, you know how um, when we try to share um, videos with our students through our presentations, they sound horrible. This should actually, this is a kind of a good workaround. So I'm gonna press play now and I do invite you all to join that link I just shared. Otherwise you're not going to, um, well, you're, you're, I'm gonna mute. So if going once, going twice, again, the link is in the chat, please click, click on the link. Okay, I'm gonna press play. I'm gonna mute myself right now. So for those people who, who are there, uh, let's see, mute. You can um, then hear, you should hear this from your own computers directly. So here I go, I'm going to mute. So that's just that's just a resource that if um, if you do use if if you're hopefully you, you have access to YouTube uh, with at your school, um, that's a great workaround so that you can watch along with your students and everybody can have a decent access uh, to sound. All right, so actually, wow, we made it with two minutes to spare. Ugh, so that's great. Um, does anybody have any questions? I hope you found this useful. It was certainly a lot of fun putting together for me because I actually um, had to explore a few programs I didn't know. Thank you so much, Gina. That was absolutely awesome. I think it, you know you're not just your your knowledge and expertise, but just your breadth of experience and using all of these different programs. You really shone throughout that presentation. And I'm so glad that it's being recorded and it's gonna be placed up on the, the conference website and the Hoover app because it's the sort of thing that I know people will keep coming back to. And if anyone should ever ask me before about this um, whole arena, I will be sure to, to direct them to this recording because it's basically just a, a, a composition, pardon the pun, of, um, of everything that you really need to get get started with in terms of music technology, especially in education. So thank you so much again for your contribution today. Thanks everyone who joined the call. Please don't let this be the end of the conversation. You can continue to ask questions that might pop up um, in the future through the Hoover app and Gina will be sharing her details in there through the chat session. So you can contact her via email if you like. And, and Mike, Michael has just pointed out, uh, and he did, I think, that earlier, BandLab is also another collaborative DAW. Thank you, Michael. I didn't know that. And I've heard a lot of good things about BandLab. It's, it's on my to-do to -do list to check out. So thank you. Sorry. Awesome. Sorry. No, that's really awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for your contributions, Michael. Really appreciate it. I hope uh, yourself and everyone else on the chat got a lot out of that. Uh, if you're continuing to watch some more workshops this afternoon, enjoy the rest of VTC. If not, um, good luck, and we will uh, see you again sometime soon.